Nah, that's a little fish. That's a little fish. Glenn Sorensen and his wife Mary Jane are no strangers to the vast wildernesses of northern Canada. Glenn is a high school teacher, so he's been able to spend many long summer vacations canoeing. It was about a five to six week trip. We were midway through the trip. I thought I had a hit there. We ate lots of fish on, on these trips. We carry food uh, for a long time and we subsidize it with fish. That evening, the couple set up camp with a fire to cook the fresh fish they'd caught that day. Mine was definitely uncooked. And I was hungry. Maybe I put some more salt and pepper on it, but I ate it anyway. Looks good. It's a little rubbery. I don't know if it's cooked. <laughs> I knew there was an element of risk when I when I Good ate call. the fish anyway, and I don't know. It's, there's an element of risk when we paddle down the rapids, when we cross Hudson's Bay, uh, when we have a polar bear in camp. It's it's just something that happens. But I was hungry, and the fish was on my plate, and I ate it. The next two weeks passed without incident. Then. Just before they were due to return to Minnesota, Glenn started to have stomach problems. Well, when we got home, I was on the toilet again after a few other visits, and I said, something is strange here. And, you know, I feel down there, and, and I felt something hanging. Oh my God, what did I do? Mary Jane, Mary Jane, would you come in here real quick? Something's wrong. Mary Jane. What's the matter, Glenn? Well, oh, look, look at that. I, I don't know what it is. It looks like my intestine. Well, it's moving. The raw fish Glenn ate on his trip contained a tiny, live cyst. This traveled to his intestines, where it developed into a tapeworm, the largest of all parasites. The fascinating thing about the tapeworm is that it comes in different segments. So it grows from head to tail, um, and just by adding segments to its uh, tail end, and that's why these tapeworms can grow to be, um, to be uh, 50 feet or more um, in length. Once inside Glenn's body, the tapeworm grew quickly, absorbing nutrients from his food through its broad, flat surface. After we had realized it was a tapeworm, we had, well, we got to get it out of here. So I start pulling it out of me, hand over hand, six inches, ten inches, a foot, foot and a half, and we were nearly two feet out. And the, the worm, this tapeworm, wouldn't come anymore. It was embedded into the walls of my intestine. So it was then that my wife ran and got a scissors. Here, can you pull it off? Well, I can't pull anymore. Well, stand up. It won't go anymore. Stand up. And okay. she snipped it off, yeah, and it was it left off. with a tapeworm, yeah. scrunched back into me. I'm not quite sure how it did it, but it uh, it contracted back into me, and uh, I, I kind of got the willies there a little bit. You've never gotten rid of the tapeworm until you've gotten rid of the head. So even if somebody loses all their segments or you give some treatment and uh, kill all the segments, but you don't kill that head of the tapeworm, the head can uh, continue to generate new segments. After taking a short course of drugs, Glenn's tapeworm was completely killed, head and all.